Hey guys, welcome to this week's podcast episode. And I've got a fantastic guest for the audience today talking about discovering your life's purpose with Ian Chamondi coming out of Toronto, Canada. He's got really fascinating thoughts and ideas. I'm really happy and excited to share Ian with the audience and talk about life's passion and purpose. So Ian, welcome. Thank you very much. I'm looking forward to talking to you. Yeah. Briefly, shortly introduce yourself and we'll dive right into the conversation. Sure. A lot of times I, I get asked how I got to where I am. And, and it starts right after university. My first job was as a copywriter <laughs> in an advertising agency. And I'm trying to write stuff for my clients. And it's so bad. It's all cliche driven. It's all superficial. It's all, it's just crap. I went to one of the art directors and I said, can you make me a sign that says, is this true? And I put it up on the wall beside, not computer at the time. And, and it was supposed to be a constant reminder to me to get at the true authenticity of the company or the brand or the product or the service to be talking about it in a substantive way. And <laughs> the sign didn't help me that much, but what it did do is it launched me on a lifelong quest for what is true, what is authentic, what is at your essence, your strength, your, your secret sauce, your superpower. And exercise that in various strategy roles through my career. But then I met a guy and we became partners in a company called Blueprint. And Blueprint, we evolved into this. We did, this was not our initial plan. Our initial plan was to be one foot in the management consulting world, one foot in the creative agency world. So we're bringing a creative approach to helping you solve your business problems. What happened over time is we picked up little pieces and those pieces started getting used over and over again in client, with clients. And what happened was the recurring pieces started being the product and it had developed into this full-blown methodology. And that methodology defined what made you uniquely remarkable as a company in seven less. So it defined the organization's secret sauce in seven words or less. That's step one. Step two is to use that, build the strategic narrative of the organization. Fancy name for what guides all of the branding and the marketing and the sales, everything about the communications of the organization. Then step three is to take that short phrase, seven words or less, what makes you uniquely remarkable and de design how the company is going to operate. What's its structure? Is it public or private? What are its HR practices? What are, how do you develop products or services? How do you bring them to market? How do all the day-to-day -day machinations of the organization? So it developed into a three-part methodology where we define what makes you uniquely remarkable in seven words or less and have it guide everything you do, all of your operations and everything you say, all of your communications. And that's how you make all of the activities of the organization consistently uniquely remarkable because they're being guided by that short phrase that defines what makes you uniquely remarkable. I think that is the single most important strategic asset of any organization, knowing that one thing at your essence that makes you uniquely remarkable. If you buy into what I'm saying, the sad thing is 98% of companies in the world, organizations, charities, not-for-profits, foundations, don't know what that is. They're flying blind. And so at the end of the process, I can tell you what a CEO and the senior leadership team and actually everybody in the organization feels like. They feel like the bail is lifted and the fog cleared. And they finally understand what this beast is that they're running or working for, what their role is inside it. And it's, hell yeah, this is what I signed up for. So that's how my corporate product blueprint developed. And then what happened? COVID hit. 
And I said to my business partner, we ain't getting any business for 12 to 18 months. Now, sadly, he died during COVID. He didn't die of COVID, but he died during COVID. So I got my coaching certification and became an executive coach. And when I hung out my shingle, I was a generic coach, like so many millions of other generic coaches. And blueprinting, this corporate product, was all about making you the opposite of generic, defining what makes you uniquely remarkable. So I wondered how the marketplace was going to talk to me to tell me to specialize. And it happened in the very first phone call with a prospect. I said, or he said, the pandemic has me rethinking my life. I don't like my career. I don't like where my life is heading. I want to live a life of meaning and purpose. And I said, awesome. What's your purpose? And he said, I don't know. <laughs> what it made me realize I could take this sort of behemoth that I had created for corporations strip out everything that didn't pertain to an individual, add in some things that did pertain to an individual, pull up. You have an individual blueprint that in which you define what makes you as an individual uniquely remarkable. That one thing at your essence that makes you uniquely remarkable, define it in seven words or less, and then use that to redesign your life. So that is so the final step, and I'll shut up in a moment, is that I had a four-time corporate client. Every time he became a CEO of a new organization, he hired me to do a blueprint. He wanted to know what the heck is this thing that I'm embarking on leading. And when I told him about the personal blueprint, he said, we need to make that into an online course so that rather than you doing that one-on-one -on -one with your clients, you can do it one to millions and you can help millions of extraordinary people discover for the first time in their lives what it is that makes them uniquely remarkable. And then it has that guide their life so that they can live a uni uniquely remarkable life. So that's my journey. I'll shut up for a moment and uh, maybe let you ask a question. Yeah, it's a really interesting introduction. And uh, I think that covered quite a lot of the questions that people were having during your, one thing you're talking about is that you talked about these catalysts, COVID and what steps can individuals take to discover their personal purpose and how can defining this purpose lead to a more fulfilling life? So finding your purpose yourself is really difficult. It is, uh, it's like doing therapy on yourself, but good place to start. And I do the same thing with corporations when I, when they hire me on to do a blueprint. They say, how do we prepare? And I say the same thing. Consider this question. If everything that you do is a means to an end, what's the end purpose? And it discombobulates them because they think that everything they do, making this product, offering this service, is their purpose. It's now, those are just the activities that you do to deliver on your service. So if everything you do is a means to an end, what's the end purpose? And I would say that to an individual as well. It's a good place to start. If, every, if everything you do is a means to an end, what is it that you're trying to accomplish? The other reason why finding your purpose is a difficult thing to do is because articulating it in a way that resonates on a deep emotional level is really critical. If you come up with an expression of your purpose that makes sense to you on a rational basis, but that's all. So yeah, that makes sense. That's good. Yep. You will not use it to guide your life. You will not be inspired by it. You will not want to strive for that. But if the, if you come up with wording that just wraps itself around your heart and you say, yeah, that's me, then that will compel you to live a life of meaning and purpose. I don't know beyond just having conversations with friends and family, the people who know you best, about what it is that they see that makes you uniquely remarkable. Take notes, take copious notes about that and do two things. Once you've got all those copious notes, look for common threads, expressions or words that resonate with you on an emotional level, but also ask yourself, what observations do I have? 
of these notes and make a list of those observations and see what that pops up for you. A little bit of that kind of thing is in my course, especially making observations of what you have written down about your life. But I'll say it's hard to do therapy on yourself. It's hard to figure out how to do, discover your own purpose. And that's why I was so excited about the opportunity to create a course. But I was saying to you, sorry, I didn't finish off that point about finding the right words. Most people don't have that capacity for language that allows them to, oh, I've got a concept in my mind that I think is the purpose. How do I express that? And when they try to do that, the words don't ring with them, even though the concept is right. And that's not a criticism. It's just that most people, if everybody had that facility for words, we'd all be writers, right? So what we do in our course is we built AI right into it and we call it Wordsmith and Wordsmith is your partner. So as I'm leading you step by step down this path to reveal your beliefs, wants, and talents, which are the raw material for your purpose. And then to use them to figure out your purpose, you're doing that in partnership with this incredibly intelligent AI assistant that we call Wordsmith to help you find the words. I would say your best bet for finding your purpose is to take my course. That's self-serving. But if not, then try those other things and see what you come up with. Yeah, really. Interesting. The, the other question is in a world filled with distractions and external pressures, how can people stay focused on living a life of meaning and purpose? And I know we have around the two, three minutes, we could keep it short and then sure. we're fine. how can the uh, audience find you and follow you and, and, and reach out to you? Sure. So I'll tell you what my purpose statement is in seven words or less. It's transforming confusion into clarity. And I just have that's my special talent. Everybody has their own, but I have a special talent. When you come to me with a complex problem that you're having trouble, I have, I have an ability to help you deconstruct it into simplest, simpler elements until the answer becomes self-evident, right? It's just so obvious. And that expression, transforming confusion into clarity, I love. That's me. That is me. And so that keeps me grounded in everything that is me. Because I ask, always ask myself the question, I'm contemplating doing this, or somebody asks me to do that. Can I leverage my strength of transforming confusion into clarity? Let's say it's a career. Let's say somebody's offering me a job. Does that career give me a good opportunity to leverage my core skill, transforming confusion into clarity? And if yes, then that's a good, that's a good job opportunity. And if no, it's then why am I thinking about that? So it's a decision-making at its root purpose is a decision-making helper just by saying, whatever it is that I'm contemplating, is it aligned with my purpose, my seven words or less or not? And that helps you make decisions and stay grounded in who you are rather than going off on all these directions and finding out, oh, that. I didn't like that one. I didn't like that one. Figure it out in advance by knowing your purpose and help you make better decisions. Yeah, really fascinating discussion. And I encourage all the audience to check out Ian's socials, give him a follow and check out his work. And thanks so much for coming on. Thank you very much.